Es macht nicht mehr Blub, sondern Wusch. Ha, was könnte das jetzt wohl sein? Es ist Bioshock Bio Infinite. Ja, yeah, das, das guckt mal geil. Ja. Am äh, Trailer jetzt gesehen, ist dann neulich rausgekommen, dicks durchs Internet gegangen. Ja, nicht rausgekommen. Es wurde lediglich angekündigt mit ein paar kleinen Assets. Sieht aber schon richtig fetzig aus. Ja. Wir befragen jetzt auf jeden Fall den Sean, der ist Entwickler. Mhm. Und äh, der erzählt uns jetzt was zu Bioshock und wie das halt mit der ganzen restlichen Serie zusammenkommt. Gucken wir mal. Game. <lacht> Bioshock Infinite. Bioshock Infinite is set in the, uh, the floating city of Columbia. It's a, a city that was made to show America's power at the turn of the century. But of course, you know, you can't have a game unless something goes wrong. So shortly after the city was launched with much fanfare, the city disappears into the sky. And that's where you come in. You, you play as a character this time, not, not a uh, unknown cipher. And you play as uh, Booker DeWitt, a, a disgraced former Pinkerton agent who has to go to the city to find a girl named Elizabeth. And the whole story is uh, taking part um, as a prequel to, to the other two Bioshock parts, or how's that uh, We're together? not calling it a prequel, we're not calling it a sequel. Uh, it'll become apparent over time. But in the timeline, it's, it's before the happenings of Bioshock 1 and 2, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, the actual date is before, but again, we're, we're not going to say whether it's actually a prequel or a sequel to, to Bioshock 1. And um, how's, the, how's the story coming together with, with, the, with the two other games? I don't know, is, is the Sky City some, some, something like falling <laughs> down and then being in the water or something like that? There, you know, there's a, there's a few things that we want to keep close to our chest and story is definitely one of them. So you can tell us, we won't tell anybody. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah the camera's <laughs> off, right? Um, <laughs> we, you know, there, there, there's a few things we like the uh, audience to discover on their own and a few things that we obviously won't want to talk about until, well, you know, to let you discover on the release game. So we're, we're going to keep that one a little close to our chest. So uh, this time you, you plan to, to have a, a real character. Who, who is he? Who are you playing? Uh, the character's name is Booker DeWitt. He is a ex-Pinkerton agent. And Pinkertons were an American private security force in the 1800s. Uh, they were union busters. They you know, were a security force. They provided muscle for the right price. And even for the likes of the Pinkerton agency, the, your character that you play was a bit too much, so he was kicked out. So he's kind of down on his luck, and he, he's approached by a mysterious character who claims that he knows where Columbia is and wants to send him there to, to collect Elizabeth. So um, as this game is taking part in, in the sky, uh, what will there be new f uh, as a feature? We had, we had <laughs> the underwater thing, so what's what's so, going to So, be? you know, when we were looking at Bioshock Infinite um, and we wanted to wipe the slate clean, we didn't really want to tell the story of Rapture anymore, but we wanted to tell the story of Bioshock. And there are no sacred cows when we're looking at, you know, moving on to Bioshock Infinite. So there, there's no shared assets, there's no shared code. Everything is completely new in Bioshock Infinite. You know, when we take on doing a city in the sky, you know, we really want to make the player feel like they're in a city in the sky. So we have new technology that has the world floating. If you, if you notice in the demo, you can see all the buildings moving against each other. The feeling of you know, standing on a ship and watching all the ships rocking. So we have these massive you know, moving elements in, in the sky. We want to bring the sky into the player's uh, player space so it's not just on the periphery so it, it'll feel like you're you're in the sky much more dangerous and, and how do you move in the sky are you, are you going well, to fly or something like that no you don't fly but we do have a transportation system called the skyline yeah which is a uh, originally meant for carrying freight around the city but it, it uh, got turned into a personal transport system and these skylines are tracks that crisscross all around the city that allow you to move from one track to another and one island to another around the city. And it's not, it's not a linear experience because you can get on and off these tracks at any time and get to tracks above you, get to tracks below you. It's going to be a very fluid transportation and combat system. In the previous parts, you had those uh, really awesome weapons like the swill. So um, I don't know, what's, what's going to be next? What's going to be more awesome? <laughs> well, we're not really going into the weapons and powers just yet, but I will say that it'll be a much bigger variety than we had in Bioshock. Okay. Size? Um, Still yeah. looking at you? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> uh, Bioshock 1 was released in 2007, and as, 
Yeah, sorry, I got to reset. That's right. <laughs> uh, Bioshock 1 was released in 2007. Has Irrational been solely focused on producing a sequel ever since? Uh, any scrapped prototypes like in the Blizzard Valve style? No, we've been working on Bioshock Infinite since, uh, you know, for about three years now. So, I mean, it, it was one of those things where we knew Bioshock was bigger than the city of Rapture, and we wanted to tell the story, like, continue telling the story, but not just the story of Rapture. Okay. Uh, you have uh, a lot of new, um, a lot of posters, a lot of, uh, what's the word? Um, <laughs> propaganda. Yeah, propaganda posters, sorry, thanks. Um, <laughs> and as, as far as I know, there are a lot of, um, I'm totally forgetting what I was going to say. <laughs> um, yeah, do, do so. I, I'll reread. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, a lot of users uh, asked um, and waited for, for a new System Shock. Can you tell us anything about a new System Shock? Will there be anything like that again? <laughs> or yeah, I, you know, we, we love the System Shock franchise, but you know, that's, we're solely focused on, on Bioshock right now. Like, but this is a very ambitious project that we're working on. And really, our, our focus is 100% on Bioshock Infinite at, the sec at yeah, this moment. This, this would be the next step. You know, Bioshock 1 and 2, it's um, beneath the water. And now Bioshock Infinite, it's in the sky. And the next step is the space. That's true. That's yeah, true. So I'll write that that's, down. That's, that, that's yeah. possible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah? OK. Zeiss? Um, uh, is it possible that we are going to meet Lando Carvissian in the Cloud City? <laughs> No, no Lando Carissi. We, we don't want to cross the beams. But how much was the Cloud City of Star Wars in influence on uh, the development of the new Bioshock? Certainly, I mean, there, there's, a wide, certainly there's a wide variety of influences that you know, we, we looked at when we're uh, working with Bioshock, or developing Bioshock Infinite. Um, from actual source material of the day, you know, looking at the architecture of the 1900s, looking at American uh, ideals from the, from you know 1900s, um, you know, certainly Star Wars was an influence. But what video game wasn't influenced by Star Wars in some way? Uh, but you know, as far as like the actual Cloud City, you know, it, it's maybe it's in there, but it's one of a million different things. I, I could also say like the Sears Robot catalog from 1900 is also a big influence on 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 uh, the aesthetic values of of Bioshock. Okay. Um. I'll try my, my propaganda poster question again. Yes. <laughs> um, propaganda was always a big thing in the Bioshock franchise as far yep. as I'm concerned. And um, for the Bioshock Infinite gameplay demo, uh, the team reappropriated real posters. And uh, in this aspect, was there full brainstorming meetings with the whole team about those posters? Um, so the, the, the propaganda posters that you see in the demo come, you know, you asked if it's a brainstorm with the whole team. There, there's, a, there's a few of us that will sit down and brainstorm these ideas for how the propaganda poster should come out. Ken Levine you know, had the original brainchild, or original ideas for a lot of the propaganda posters because he's really the one that's telling the story and writing the story. So a lot of, a lot of the ideas will come from Ken Levine and, and trickle down to the art department and we'll, we'll start putting things together for him to approve or disapprove. Okay. Um, what was the team's reaction to how the combat mechanics were pushed further still in Bioshock 2? Uh, will Infinite follow up on that style or are they hoping to divert or sidestep the issue and keeping moving the combat towards a gameplay model? Uh, well, the uh, the Bioshock the 2 gameplay. Yes. Uh, did you convert it to Bioshock Infinite or did you create something new? I mean, the, the combat in Bioshock 2 is obviously kind of new to yes. Bioshock. So still a step further away from the original or a step back? Um, again, you know, I don't want to get too deep into the gameplay mm. uh, aspects or digging too deep into the design of weapon systems and how all that stuff's going to work yet. We, you know, we have more stuff planned in the future uh, to talk about weapons and powers and things like that. You know, th this is our first reveal, so okay. we, we want to keep some of that stuff uh, <laughs> close, close to our chest. All right. Is there a time frame when you're planning to release the game? Yeah, Bioshock will be released in uh, 2012. Okay, that's it. Yeah, we are done. Thank you. Thank you.